everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today I was looking for a nice relaxing video. We are creeping closer and closer to Cavemas so I wanted to just chill today because I'm having a busy busy week. So to facilitate that I am here in Ticket to Dreams by Karolina Kubikowska and as you can see I have my very pretty range of Julia K art studio handmade watercolours. I did actually start, now when I say start, it was like a tiny sliver of a picture in here. And that's what I want to go back to today. And it is this one here. And I thought this was a lovely scene and I wanted to make use of some of Julia's particularly shimmery paints. If you look at these ones here and I go like that, oh. I thought that would work really well on some of our mountains, etc. here. So that is what we're going to do today. This book is especially good for watercolour and I found this out quite early on and it's because the paper's quite thick, it's quite robust. It does not behave like watercolour paper so we do have to be careful but we can definitely use our paints in this book and I've done a number of pages in watercolour and ink tents as well and you can see there's absolutely no problems. Now my first problem is trying to figure out what colour it was I used over here because it only did this tiny little bit. But let's get zoomed in a wee bitty. I have a funny feeling it was Harold. I may be completely wrong, but we're going to find out. A large selection of paintbrushes here as always and uh, I know that my trusty number six C white brush that I normally use is through uh, because it was needing cleaned so I've got a number six. This came in a subscription box, a uh, Habico brush. Um, I'm going to try that. We'll see how we go. Failing that I'll probably jump back to my Winsor & Newton Cotman number six. So in addition to that as per usual I have my water with my paint puck in and I've got spare water as well. So this is uh, this is this is dirty water and this is clean water. The other thing as well is I, I have acknowledged your requests for uh, paint pucks for the stash shop. I'm really struggling to get a hold of them, but I am trying to get some back in stock. So I'll let you know when that happens. I do have other items up in the stash shop today as well. And uh, I've, I've got something quite exciting to talk about, but I'm gonna do it at the end of the video. So if you are in to your art supplies or want to try something new. If you hang about at the end, I will elaborate a little bit more then. Okay, let's see what we can do here. See, I think it might have been Harold, which is this lovely dark blue color. Now the thing is with this paper, because it is not watercolor paper, we do have to work quite quickly. It does soak into the paper. That looks about right, doesn't it? Does that look right to you guys? It looks similar anyway, doesn't it? So we do have to kind of get a wiggle on a little bit which is fine, that's okay. Oh my goodness, that's far too much. Oh, I'm gonna have to go some here. What a disaster. Not off to the best start. I'm gonna have to maybe blend that in a little bit there. Oh. So the nice thing about using watercolor like this is we can get a fairly quick job done. When you're using pencil, you know, you have to really invest some time into a full page like this but we can cover quite a large area fairly quickly. So our ability to complete a picture becomes much, much, much quicker. Which if you're pushed for time like me, I mean, I hardly ever have time to just sit and do stuff. And the chances of me having the time to complete a colouring page in my own time that's not for the channel is lessening significantly these days. So this is actually really satisfying and really nice. Well, we're having the painterly effect, that's for sure. So one of the things that I did today was I went to the dentist. We really struggle to find a dentist around these here parts. And because of lockdown, it's something that we just hadn't done. So I literally haven't seen a dentist in nearly two years. And uh, I, it was something I sorely, sorely, sorely wanted to get sorted out. In the UK, we have the NHS, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. The problem is that to register as an NHS dental patient, there are not many dental surgeries who are accepting NHS patients. And the ones that are, the waiting times for appointments and treatments is colossal. So we we found a surgery that, w that was taking NHS patients and we were going to have to wait nearly three months for our initial appointment where they take all your x-rays and, you know, just have a look at your mouth. And uh, after that, after having not been to the dentist for so long, I wasn't really very keen on that idea. Uh, and I asked them, I said, after the initial appointment, how long are you having to wait 
for an actual appointment, you know, if you for your treatment. And the answer I got was between three and four months, sometimes longer. To me, that's just not something I was prepared to do because that's an awful long time. If you've got, you know, a loose filling, you know, something that's not an emergency, um, if you've got a loose filling or something to wait four months to get it fixed is just crazy. So I bit the bullet and we decided to go private. I spoke, it was a number of weeks ago now, about Wu getting dental treatment at the at the vets and it was really, really expensive. I think I'm going to try and get into the vets to get some dental treatment. I nearly fell off the chair today when the dentist told me how much things are going to cost. It's an absolute fortune. Unfortunately, Mr. Jem and I both need work done, which I'm not surprised about since it's been so long since we've been at a dentist. But I was not prepared for a four-figure bill. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So... That's been a bit of a shock to the system. I knew it was going to be expensive, but I just, as I say, I wasn't quite prepared for how expensive it was going to be. So that set uh, put put me firmly in the depressed camp today, knowing that I've got to fork out all this money in January. But my teeth need looked after, and I've got quite good teeth, and I would like to keep them that way. So that's kind of my justification. It's like I've got to take care of my teeth, but we just have to go and do it. So. I have made it well into my 30s with only one filling. Apparently it's quite good, but what's happened is that filling is now loose and the tooth behind where the filling is is starting to decay as well because this loose filling has been sort of bumping up against it. I am going to end up with a second filling, which I'm not <laughs> not all that pleased about. But that is literally, that's the, the, like, the extent of the damage. So I suppose it could be a lot worse. Uh, see, Mr. Jem, he's not so lucky. Even genetically, he's not so lucky with these teeth. His, he's not genetically blessed with, with robust teeth, but he eats so much sugar. Uh, so his teeth are in a lot worse shape than mine. And uh, his dental bill, once he's finished, he's, he's not getting everything done all at once because we can't afford it. Uh, but by the time he's finished, uh, his dental bill will be significantly higher than mine. So we might have to end up taking out a second mortgage to pay for our teeth. But hopefully once we get them sorted and we're back to regular checkups, it's every six months we go here. I'm hoping that the bills won't be just quite as expensive next. But that was that was shocking. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting to have to fork out for it. I knew it wasn't going to be like, ah, yeah, 50 pence and we'll fix all your teeth. But uh, yeah, a consultation's 70 odd pounds. When I take my dog to the vets, it's only like 35 <laughs> So it's like double going to the vets. Uh, but yeah, I, was, I have to admit I was a little bit shocked by that. If you want a filling, £165 for a filling. Not a problem. I'm like, oh. And they're also charging, though this is the one that I can't get over, it's something like £50 for a scale and polish. So just to get your teeth cleaned, which is something I love to have done. I love having a scale and polish because my mouth always feels so clean. £50 for a scale and polish. It literally takes 15 minutes, not even. Um, yeah, so clearly I'm in the wrong profession. I should have trained as a dentist. But this is the this is the price that we pay. I mean, you know, not just financially. But the th thing that scares me is there's people that can't afford private dental treatment. There's just no way. If you have a family of four, uh, you know, that's going to be a lot of money. And there's people that just, they can't justify spending that kind of money. So they they go on as NHS patients. Now, there was a, f there was a family of five in before Mr. Jem and I today. And I don't, there was one of the family members required treatment and they were NHS patients and their appointment is in May. Now, this is December and their appointment for their treatment is May. And Mr. Jem and I are getting our treatment done in January. Like, we're, we're literally waiting four weeks and they're waiting four months. And that's, it's just there's this such a big divide and I don't really know how I feel about that. On one hand, I feel really fortunate that we, you know, we'll be able to manage a, a dental bill like that. And I'm really thankful that there's only two of us and, you know, we don't have like two or three kids because we certainly couldn't afford to go private if that was the case. But it makes me worry for people that really need 
decent dental care and that's the length of time that they're having to wait because you know they're, they're priced out of of taking private treatment so it's given me a lot to think about today and it's it, honestly it's not sitting well with me it's really not um i have these little moral quandaries to myself and some people are like that's just the way the world works and i'm like yeah okay i get that and you know be thankful for the position that you're in but it doesn't make me feel any better about it so there, there you go, that's today's little quandary and pondering and I can't stop thinking about that family having to wait until May for an appointment. And I know that they're in the same position as us in that they've probably looked everywhere for a dentist that's, you know, got, you know, that the waiting times aren't too long. But the truth is for NHS patients, it's just not there. So unless you're going to cough up the cash, you have to wait. It's kind of put a dampener on my mood today. I was uh, I was in relatively good fettle when I got up this morning. A Papa Gems here, which is always cheers me up a little bit. Because I've just been, I've been super busy and obviously stuff with the storm and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We got battered again. <laughs> the lights were flickering last night and I, do you know that way I just kept looking at the bulbs and I'm like, don't you dare. <laughs> like, I just don't you dare. But I'm, I'm feeling really worn down again and I thought I'd kind of picked myself up a wee bit. I know I was languishing for a wee while and I honestly thought I was, um, that I was getting somewhere and I was kind of gathering speed again, but... I just feel as if somebody's run me over with a bus. And it, like verging on a like feeling a little bit depressed today. I would say I think a lot of that was to do with the dentist this morning. I can't, I just I can't wait to to take a break. Like a proper break, I mean. I am I am looking forward to that immensely. I can't wait for Christmas now. And it's just because I can stop, like I can actually stop for a little while properly. Because the other thing as well is I'm back to this situation and I've been here before and it wasn't that long ago. I have zero time to art for myself just because it's something I fancy doing. Everything's a video or everything's for Instagram or a precursor to a video or, you know, something like that. And I really need to take that time out for myself and just, just paint stuff and draw stuff and diddle about in my sketchbook. Not really produce anything spectacular, but just to, just to just because I can. Again, I'm hoping that the time off that I take, I'll be able to, to do some of that. I just feel as if to, like, oh, this sounds like a really depressing video. I'm really sorry, guys. But I just feel as if my life's like one big to-do list just now. Very little time to actually just switch off or even just unwind. I'm literally going from one task to the next. And then before I know where I am, it's bedtime and it's like, oh, open my eyes and start all over again. Let's get the chainsaws out, like, you know. So hopefully Christmas will bring some respite. But, but Papa Jim's not he's not here and you know here for the duration now. He's only here for a few days. Um he's fixing some tractors and things. So he wanted to bring some tools up from home because my parents stay three hours away. They are not close to us. So he wanted to bring some tools and things up so that when he does come over the festive period, my parents are both going to be here for probably about three weeks over the festive period. And my dad's going to do a lot of tractory fixing type stuff while he's here. So he wanted to drop off some tools and leave them here so that when he comes up at Christmas, it's not something else that they've got to lug up with them because otherwise they'll, ha they'll have to come separately. My dad would have to come in his van and mum would come in her car. But if he drops this stuff off now, then he can just come up with mum in the car. Okay, there we go. We've got a bit of coverage there. So I'm going to let that dry before I do anything else to it. <laughs> it's a little splodge down here. My bad. <laughs> I want to think about what's going on here. And I think we better have a sparkly moon. I think that is the most, Im <laughs> most important thing. So I'm having a little look at the colours that I've got here. And uh, there is actually Eden, which is, uh, it's like, a, it's a fluorescent, or a bit of fluorescent. There's nothing fluorescent about it. It's like a pearlescent colour. So I think we'll maybe try a little bit of that. So I will see how I go. This is, this paint is so lovely. Like these, oh. This is what Julia does best. These shimmery colours, they're just... Mm -mm -mm. Give my brush a good clean, make sure I've got that blue off. So as I'm painting, obviously you're not going to see much, but once it's dry and I tilt it, you'll be able to see the fruits of my labour. And see, I might need to put two layers down just so that I get enough, you know, sh shim shimmeriness. Iridescence, that's the word, ha! Huh? See? Gem Gem can use big words. Okay, I think I've got that whole area covered. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do around here yet, but we shall, we shall see. And is it entirely wrong that I want purple clouds? I was thinking like pink and purple mountains here, perhaps. <laughs> I, I don't know why pink and purple mountains seem to, seem to stick out in my head for some, for some reason. 
Oh, I don't, I don't know. Okay, leave me alone. But also, I've got this uh, this color Capella, which is this one here, and you can see I was like, oh, and I was kind of wanting to put a layer of that down round maybe some of the outside here. I want a really sparkly something or other today. That's the way I'm feeling. I've got some sparkles in my life. Cheer me up. So I think what we'll do is I will take a I'll take a flat purple to begin with. So I see what this looks. This is quite vibrant. And we'll try on a shadow part. Look, we'll try it in here. Yeah, that's quite a nice base. This is just a, a what I call a flat colour. There's no shimmery pigment in this. I do want it to be a bit more uh, saturated though. So I've just picked that straight up off the pan. So I've finally got my, my finger out. I'll have no Christmas decorations up at all. And it is the 8th of December. Nothing. Not an iota. Uh, again, just time constraints, no other reason. So I did look out all the Christmas decorations and I have, uh, I need to muster up some energy to deal with, to deal with that. Mr. Jem will be cutting down the Christmas tree at the weekend. So I kind of like to have everything else up and the tree's the last thing to go up. So I really, really, need, I really need to get a move on. But I was thinking maybe this evening, um, I am supposed to, Wednesdays, it's Wednesday today. I am supposed to have Wednesdays off. And when I say that, I mean that Wednesdays off from my proper job. I do not work my proper job on a Wednesday. Well, I'm not supposed to work my proper job on a Wednesday. But I obviously do youtube -y stuff on a Wednesday. Uh, so I don't actually get a day, off, <laughs> a day off, but I try and take a few hours in the afternoon. So that is my plan today. Um, it is going to be late afternoon, right enough, the way things are going, but that's okay. So I may... Uh, I may put up some decorations later, or at least make a start. I, or <laughs> I ordered a new Christmas wreath. Uh, I usually make my own wreath, and I, I just I don't have time this year. Like I, I, I've seen that so often these days, but I really just I don't this year. I don't think I've got the energy for it either. So I thought, right, okay, I'll have a look and see if there's one that I can get. You know, like um, like um. An artificial one, that's the word I was looking for. I'm not really sure what this is here. I don't know whether this is just really in shadow. So I thought I'll get an artificial one and that way I can reuse it. And then if I want to make one next year, I'm sure that I will find someone that I can give the, the artificial one to. And that I'm sure will somebody, somebody somewhere. So that was kind of my thinking. Oh my God, talk about going down a rabbit hole. <laughs> I narrowed it down to 16 different wreaths. <laughs> So, I kid you not, 16 different wreaths. Oh, wow, it was an experience. It really was an experience. But, um, yes, we... Uh, <laughs> I didn't realise there were so many different types. Okay, I'm going for this really delicate light purple colour for the highlight area, and it's called Gredlin. I'm sure Julia's going to shout at me for mispronouncing all her paint names, but hey, I'm trying. So you can see it's really, really nice, really nice. And it's quite an opaque colour as well. So let's, um, oh goodness me, that's that's a bit too opaque. I actually forget how concentrated Julia's paints are. So yeah, I was not aware that there was so much choice when it came to, when it came to Christmas wreaths, my goodness. <laughs> uh, my only sort of uh, criteria was it has to be quite a big one because the door on our porch is quite a big wide door you know it's, a, it's an old building so it's a it's a big old-fashioned door and if I got a little one it would just look kind of lost and I would have liked one that ha that was like more white themed you know and rather than the traditional like red and green I wanted one with white on it because the porch is white so and the Christmas lights that go up there are white as well but uh there was ones with decorations there was ones with berries there was ones with baubles there was ones with baubles and berries there was ones with led lights on them there was ones with flashing led lights on them and i kind of was like oh, okay <laughs> it was a little bit overwhelming i thought wow just wanted a wreath I, I must have sat there i don't know how long i spent doing that last night i was doing other things it was like in between other things but i was walking about you know my phone in my hand in the house i was like wandering about the house scrolling through these these Christmas wreaths. So I think I've found one that's going to be okay. That's the right size. <laughs> and I said to my mum on the phone, I said, see, after all that, I bloody well better look by the time it gets here. So I'm going to be bitterly disappointed if it's uh, if it doesn't look like the picture on the internet. <laughs> so I shall keep you updated with that. I might stick a wee photograph of that up on the 
on the community tab or maybe on Facebook or something. You can see all my trials and tribulations. <laughs> I was like, wow, how how you know how difficult is this really? I just want to read. But I've seen that I saw lots of lovely ones, um, uh, real ones in like garden centres and things like that. But I'm always quite cautious because if you get them too early and the weather's really dry, they start to droop. Or if there's a lot of wind, like we've just had, they get battered and you know, that's that's the end of it kind of thing. If any of you have really creative Christmas wreaths, I would absolutely love to hear about them and I would love to see them because uh, it's something I really enjoy looking at. I think it's a very festive thing that makes me feel, you know, a little bit jingly bells and all that. I think I might want to start with the sparkly sparkly. Now, the question is, I can go Capella, which is this sort of turquoisey one here, but I've also got Atria. And I've got Polaris, but Polaris has got more purple in it. I don't know how obvious that is because it looks very blue next to next to this one. But when I'm tilting it, it's got a lot of violet in it. So I'm thinking that maybe Atria might be the way forward. So, okay, let's, let's try that. I might actually leave that till the end because I seem to remember before that those pigments in particular is very hard to get like the glittery flakes off and you end up with glitter, you know, transferring everywhere else. So I might just leave that just now. Got these branches to do. Do I really want brown? This is the thing. I think I want... I can have brown that's not brown though. I don't know how to pronounce this one. I think it's Mimer. It's M-I-M-E-R. Mimer. And it's actually brown with green over the top of it. So that could be quite cool. It looks... It looks like mint chocolate. But the shimmer isn't ridiculous in it. So let's try that. This is one of Julia's colours that I haven't tried. Because she keeps sending me things, you see. She's just basically enabling me, but, you know, we all need a bit of enabling. I'm usually the one that does the enabling, so... And again, I'm not sure how much you will be able to see that pigment on the screen. You can see there, it looks really green there, but it looks quite brown down here. It's it's a really interesting combination. And if you want sparkly branches, well, there you go. So, other fun stuff that's been happening. Um, our neighbour, which is uh, the young gentleman that works for Mr. Jem and his girlfriend. Um, they're, they're just a young couple. Uh, they, I'm sure I've mentioned this before. They bought a collie pup. They, they got themselves a collie pup. And his name is Angus. And Angus is now the ripe old age of 16 weeks. And he's at that stage where we say he's all lugs and legs. Because he's got, he's got like foldy over ears. But his head hasn't grown into his ears yet. So he's got these big flappy ears and uh, he's stretched. So he's got these big long legs and his body hasn't caught up yet. But we've started taking the dogs out together. Uh, when I exercise mine in the field, we bring Angus along for the ride. And he is absolutely freaking hilarious. He keeps trying to give Kip, Pip kisses and Pip does not like other dogs up at her face. She's quite wary of other dogs. Uh, and the fact that he's a bit weird than her doesn't seem to make any difference. She just doesn't like the fact that he keeps trying to give her kisses. <laughs> but he's uh, he's kind of learning boundaries now. Pip's kind of gave him, a, gave him a little telling off, you know, a wee bit of a growl at him once or twice. And he's backed off. So I think he's getting the message. And he's learning to socialise with not just other dogs, but with other dogs that are his shape. So he's realised he can't keep up with Pip either as well, but he tries his little hardest. He's absolutely adorable. And he is hilarious to watch running about. I will ask permission uh, from my neighbour if she will let me take a little video of him and uh, I can put it up for you somewhere again because it honestly, it's like it cheers you up instantly. You know, they say like puppies make everything better. If you ever need a smile, you just have to watch this puppy running because he's not quite coordinated but it's the sheer determination determination of youth that he's going to catch up with Pip, which I find hilarious because Pip to me is obviously a young dog, but she's she's not a puppy anymore, to be fair. Uh, it, really, it made me laugh so much yesterday. It really, really did. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. I struggle to remember when Pip was that size. Like, obviously she was that size, but I was like, I can't really remember her at 16 weeks. And then I realised it must have been around Christmas time that she would have been that age. Uh, and I meant I meant to ask my neighbour what when um when Angus was born because they they must be quite close together you know when their birthdays are I'm trying to figure out if this is all one branch it looks well no actually it doesn't I'm gonna make it that this is a separate branch here but yeah they're so they're so fun that's the stage that I like puppies at like I I have no patience for 
very small puppies, but see when they get to like sort of between 16 and 20 weeks, uh, that's my favourite time to have a puppy because they're absolutely hilarious, but they're toilet trained. And, you know, you, you've kind of got the basics down by then. And if you've got a collie, their they're recall's pretty good. Or at least it should be by that point. So that's like that's like the fun time to have a puppy. Okay, I think I'm going to do the, the reflection moon the same as this one. Because it's very, very delicate. And I can put another colour over the top of it. I'm going to stick that down. Oh, I'm shedding. Now, if this is dry enough... Oh, it's not quite... Once this is dry, I'm going to put a layer of that iridescent paint. Can you see it? Sh see if I do that now, you can see it shimmering, can't you? I'm going to put a little layer of that just on a few spots. So pick it, make it, pew, make it go like that. <laughs> so for these parts here, I'm going to really water down the colours that I was using and just get that reflection in. I don't really know what's going on over here, but that's okay. I don't need to know. I really enjoy working in this book. I feel, I feel very free when I'm doing this. I don't feel as if I have to produce anything or, you know, I don't have a sort of standard that I need to keep myself to. I just enjoy making a mess, basically. <laughs> and there's something re really relaxing about this. And this is why I keep colouring as part of my, of my, you know, art repertoire because especially times like just now, I've just done the same, I've just watered down the this colour as well, which is a gradolin. And it's really important for me personally to have this because right now I feel so relaxed. Like I'm having good fun, I'm chatting away to you guys. This is so important. You can't push yourself to produce, produce, produce all the time because you will burn out. And that's one of the main reasons why I've kept on adult colouring. Even though I'm perfectly capable of drawing my own line work, I like to have this. I like it, I like it a lot, actually. A lot. So I've got a really weak reflection there, which I'm quite happy with. I'm going to tackle these other branches now. And um, I've got a colour. Uh, I've got Vidar and I've got Arvid up the top here. And these ones have both got a tiny shimmer in them, but not much. And I think I'm going to go with Vidar. That's one of the very, very first. Oh, there's Anton as well. Or Spira, oh my goodness. I think I'm going to go with Anton, actually. Vidar was one of the very first... No, Arvid was one of the very first paints of Julia's that I actually bought. And it's um, it's almost like a turquoise green and the shimmer in it's like a dark silver colour. So the Anton is a bit more of a sap green and the shimmer in it is gold. So I think that'll complement the Mimer one quite nicely. So I can do these other branches in this one. It's dry enough for me to go for it. Now I've left the little nubbins at the end because I'm not quite sure what colour I'm going to make them. You know, whether they're buds or whether they're berries, I'm not sure. The other thing I do quite a lot as well when we're just talking about, you know, art, art to, you know, to de-stress or to just purely for S's and giggles, if you know what that is. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to do is draw trees. That's like, uh, it's like my comfort blanket, I would say. If the whole world's falling down around my head... I just go and sit in a corner with a, with a graphite pencil and draw a tree. <laughs> and then everything's okay. That's kind of... Uh, I, again, I don't know why, but I just I find it really relaxing. You can make the branches go wherever you want, you know. I was interrupted momentarily there. Uh, some, someone has uh, has left us a, a little Christmas bag. And unsurprisingly, it's whiskey that's in the bag. And... Uh, oh... Oh, quick interlude here. For y'all that are into whiskey, Loch Lomond Single Malt. The the official spirit of the golf open. Well, there you go. They don't get much more Scottish than that, do you? Let's have a look at the bottle. Oh, it's not a very exciting bottle. I always like a good whiskey bottle. Oh, that's actually quite nice. Unfortunately, um, I don't drink whiskey apart from Jack Daniels. I can't stand the stuff. So that'll be... I wonder who's left that. There's no label on the bag or anything. I don't know who it's from. Mr. Jem will know who it's from. But there you go. That happens a lot this time of year. Uh, someone left 14 turnips on my doorstep last year. And I had no idea who they were from until Mr. Jem came home and told me. Christmas turnips, okay. It's funny. Really funny. The, the joys of being a farmer. Mr. Jem must have been nice to him this year if he's given him whiskey. <laughs> But yeah, we'll keep that for New Year. Uh, we will be having visitors. This is the other thing I wanted to ask you guys. And I just want your, your pure, purely your opinion on this. I have asked a few people if they would like to come uh, here to the, to the cave for New Year. I have also said to them that 
I'm only happy for them to come if they take a PCR test, you know, for COVID. And someone's taken umbrage to the fact that I've asked them to do that. And I don't know if I'm just being, I know I've always said that maybe I'm like, I'm probably a little bit overcautious with all the COVID stuff. But I just feel like my parents are going to be here. They're a little bit older. To be fair, they've had their boosters now as well. They've had their third shot. But I don't want, you know, anybody, like risking anybody bringing it into the house. And do you do you think that's an unreasonable request? I don't think it is. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I just, you know, I want to have people over. I don't want, and we've got no restrictions in that sense yet. That might change. But as far as we know, we're allowed to have people in the house, but I would like them to at least take a lateral flow test to let me know that they're not riddled with COVID before I allow them into my house. Um, but yeah, apparently I've offended somebody by by asking them to do that. Now that tells me one of two things. Either they are anti-vax, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. If people do not want to get a vaccination, that is fine. People make different choices. But I want to know that you don't have COVID before you come into my house. Or they think that they they have COVID or will be in contact with someone that will have COVID. That's the only reasons I can think of why someone would be offended that I've asked them to take a, a test. I can't think of any other logical reason why someone would be offended by that because it's not... You know, I know lots of people, especially younger people, who had COVID and they didn't know they had it. And all they were doing was just passing it around because they didn't know. So I don't really think it's that big a deal just to take a test. And the tests are free here. You can pick them up for nothing. I don't know. Uh, I just I th see with things like that, I just sometimes feel as if maybe I'm losing a grip on reality. Because I'm in my own wee bubble here in the cave, you know, and the farm and stuff. Uh, but I, I just, I don't know. Love to hear your thoughts on that. Not looking for validation, I'm just interested to hear how many people think that that's rude and how many people think that that's sensible or not rude. We'll see. Anyway, if said person doesn't want to come, well, I suppose that's their problem, isn't it? They're the one that's going to miss out. Because the thing is as well, and it's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to it, we moved here into this very house literally like a month before the first lockdown came in and we have not actually had a party like a proper party. We've had people over cautiously uh, from time to time, but it's never been in any sort of numbers or, you know, because we're trying to keep everybody safe. And I really want to have a party because it's a great house for a party. So I, yeah, I'd really like to do that. I'd really, really like to do that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not important, but it's it's exciting and it's a nice thing to be able to do. And to be in the position where people want to stay, we have beds for them as well. Yeah, it's something I'm really looking forward to and I don't really want a party pooper pooping all over my party, you know. It's going to be good fun though. It'll be good fun. We're going to set up the... Uh, we've got, well, we've got two reception rooms. We've got like a, like a, I would say what's a tr more a traditional lounge or living room. And we've got the sunroom. But obviously we've got the cave and we've got Mr. Jem's office as well. And they're fairly big rooms. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the... Our drinks cabinet is in our sunroom. So that's going to be like the bar area. <laughs> and in the living room we're going to have the fire on. And that's going to be like the, you know, the, the, the comfy seat for the old people. <laughs> and then we're going to set up the VR headset with the TV in Mr. Jem's office. And here in the cave, I haven't decided what we're doing here in the cave. And then we're just going to have a buffet laid out in the kitchen. So people can like move about and mingle and things. So, But this is exciting for me because I've never been able to do it. So I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know what colour to do these buds now. Mm. I think for the water, let's concentrate on that. I'm going to take a slightly larger brush and maybe take a number eight. See white number 12, sell these in the stash shop as well. That's that's better because I just want to put like a sweep like this over here. And I want to use the color, well, I can either use Veritas Serum, but I think that's a bit too spangly dangly, this one here. Or Wentworth next door. I think that's more muted. It's probably a bit more sensible. So I'm going to go for Wentworth. Uh, with this big super duper brush. Do love this size 12. 
This is actually my second one. My first one met a sticky end. That's why it look, it's so clean. It's hardly been used. That is about to change. Yeah, my first one, uh, I ended up using it with acrylic ink of all things. And the acrylic ink stained the, the bristles or so I thought. And then I realised that I hadn't actually cleaned it properly. And the bristles were just all stuck together and that was the end of that. Okay, so let's go for this. So I'm just going to cover the entire area really quickly. Like so, over the whole damn lot. Especially up here. Over was moon. The moon. I don't think I actually got any paint on that bit there. Good old Wentworth. I think I'm going to make these buds green, but I think I'm just going to use like a normal person's green. Uh, something may be fairly muted. I'm going to move my sparkly paints out of the way for a minute. So I've got one palette that's got this, the shimmery ones in and one palette that's got the flat colours in. So here are all the flat colours here. I think I'll probably go for Gustav. That's one of my actual favourites. Or maybe Olaf. Olaf will probably fit in with these branches better. No, let's go Gustav. Okay, let's go Gustav. Gustav's probably one of my favourite colours because it's green. And it's a paint that I do use fairly often. Yeah, because I, I, I think you can have too much sparkle. I do think there's such a thing as too much shimmer. Oh, I missed the end of that branch there. The other time that I find water colouring and colour colouring books nice is see when the weather gets really really cold and I'm talking like when we're down well into minuses when my hand starts to seize up it's much easier for me to use a paintbrush because I don't have to put any pressure on it at all I can have a much looser grip and if I want I can use a bigger barrel paintbrush and it's just a bit easier on my hand. And if I do go outside the lines, which happens a lot in those situations, it's not really a big deal because you're just getting that painterly feel. So that's another time that I like to, I kind of revert back to this kind of thing is if I'm just, if I want to do something arty, but my hand's being farty. <laughs> yeah, when my hand's not playing ball. It's really nice, again, to have something to come into and feel like you're you're producing something. You know, you're creating in a way. Maybe not the way you would want to create sometimes, but it's better than not being able to do anything at all. I've just looked at my watch as well and I've realised what time it is. And my supermarket order is going to be here. Uh, like, my one hour time slot is coming up in about five minutes, so I may have to disappear and come back. But you guys won't even know. <laughs> Covert shopping. <laughs> I've also got dogs to feed as well. I'm not. I'm really not very organised today. But that was because going to the dentist... I nearly said the vet there. Going to the dentist screwed me up a bit this morning. It's put me out of my routine. And y'all know I don't like to be put out of my routine. I could actually sit for the full hour waiting for the, the delivery man though. Sometimes... It, it, normally my slot's in the morning. So when I was at the dentist this morning would be normally when I would get my shopping. Same slot every week. And... It's usually between 10 and 11 and sometimes I can literally sit for almost the full hour, you know, sitting waiting on it and they come at like 5 to 11. <laughs> um, assuming that that would be more likely to be the case in the afternoon because if they've had a few problems or late deliveries, I'll probably be towards the end of the time slot. If they're not going to make it for your time slot, they do let you know. They usually text you and say, ah, we're running a wee bit late. So I'll just keep going. <laughs> I'll be fine. I say not that you'll know anyway. The magic of editing. There we go. Well, to be fair, we've not got much left to do. I didn't put any... Um, oh, I've still got some Harold here. I'll put some in there. kind of forgot. I don't know why that I didn't do that, but I think it's just because it's been hatched. I might actually just leave the bit around the moon. Now, on these clouds here, I've got Signet, and Signet is very pale pink. I can see it there. Again, shimmery. And it's a colour I don't use at all. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't use it at all. It's far, far too delicate for my liking. But, mm -hmm. again, not the whole thing, because that would be too much. Oh, I've decided I'm going to use the Signet instead of the Edun for these highlights, which will look nothing to you at the moment, but when we're dry. Mm -hmm. Having a great time. I don't, I don't want to go and put shopping away and... And, and feed dogs and stuff. I want to sit here and paint stuff. Okay, finally, finally, finally. Uh, <laughs> what I want to do is just put some shimmer on these, um, on this outside area. I've decided I'm going to go for Atria. I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to use this number 12. 
Okay, it takes a little while to get these ones going, these kind of holographic ones, and you begin to see the, the hollow pigment moving about on top of the pan and then you know that you're good to go. So I'm just wanting to like sweep some on. Oh, it's so pretty already! Oh my god! <laughs> I can't even. Oh, look at this. This is going to be so cool. I do want to do the whole area right now. <laughs> just, I lied. I completely and utterly lied. I, I can't help myself because these pigments are freaking amazing. They're quite expensive. I'm not going to pretend that they're not because they are, but they are absolutely 100% worth it if you like hollow things. Oh, all the shimmer. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. All over. And I know you can see that on the camera already. Like, I know you can see it. Doesn't it look the beans? The freaking beans, I say. I get really excited about stuff like this. Which is strange, because I don't like overly glittery, overly glittery things. But when it comes to hollow, I'm like, mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Especially when you're working with something that is quite sort of surreal like this. It's like, yeah, if there's any time you're going to use something like that, I'd be ready. Just pop a little bit of it. Get all over my page. Oh, that was a bit much. Got a bit carried away there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to call it done at that, I think. I actually quite like the fact that the middle's now really understated and the outside isn't. But if I, if I tilt this in the light now, you can see all the shimmery areas. And that, like, what's not fun about that? Okay, not the best colouring skills ever in the world, but just a good bit of shimmery fun. So I hope you've enjoyed yourselves today. This video has absolutely helped me 100% today. I feel a million times better than I did an hour or so ago. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Just to talk quickly about the stash shop, um, I do have more charity artworks going up today. So if you want to check for that. Also, fingers crossed, I am hoping, 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 I've managed to get a hold of some of the Derivan liquid pencil. That's the squeezy tubes of liquid graphite. We've had them in a couple of subscription boxes. I've managed to get the real wettable one and the normal one. So if I have them, they will be up in the shop today. If they are not there, they haven't arrived in time. But again, keep your eyes peeled because they will be coming very, very shortly. They are difficult to get a hold of. They're out of stock in a lot of places and they're quite expensive. So take the opportunity while you can to grab a set once they are available. If it's something you're interested in or if you got the subscription box and you want to build up your colours. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. So this has been very, very therapeutic for me today. And I'm, I'm just in, ooh, ooh, sit here all day. <laughs> As we draw closer to Cave Miss, I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. And it'll be the second to last video before Cave Miss starts. So have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. Please take care of each other.